This is New Wave Jazz. Hello, everybody. Uh, how y'all doing? I'm Dre Brothers, and this is New Wave Jazz right here on Jazz WSSB 90.3 FM, South Carolina's only jazz station. Um, this is a very exclusive interview uh, that we have today, a special show for New Wave Jazz. One of New York City's, you know, what I, I, I've i been listening to them for a little while, and uh, I think they're a dynamic duo. Uh, Sounds of A&R, also known as SOAR. They're here with us. How are you guys doing today? We are doing well. Thanks for yeah. having us. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's such an uh, honor. And I want to say on behalf of WSSB and the staff here, uh, we want to say thank you for your time uh, being with us and just being a part of this uh, New Wave Jazz show that we're that we're doing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you for having us. This is great. Thank you. OK. Sounds of A&R. Yes. Mm-hmm. A dynamic vocal and trumpet duo. So, um. I could ask the, you know, the original question, you know, where did, where did Sounds of A&R, how did y'all come up with that name? You know, tell us about, you know, who you guys are for our listeners. So we have a little debate upon who came up with the name, but you know, my version is the truth. It's the real version. So let me, let me tell you the truth. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> it, we met actually in 2013 at a jazz club in Jersey City called Moore's Lounge. Um, the funny thing we like to talk about is how we actually performed together before we spoke. So wow. we were sit- yeah, we were sitting in on a jam session. I had happened to come. I had just moved in this area because I'm originally from Kansas. And I had come to New Jersey uh, to study at William Patterson University at the Jazz Studies Program. And I was frequenting a lot of the different clubs and I had come in to this particular club called Moore's Lounge. It was the hot spot for all the jam sessions and stuff. And this guy happened to be there. So we sat in on a tune and it was it was nice. We had a nice, nice vibe musically. There was a nice energy. Um, the band was kicking, Randall was doing his thing, and I'll let you finish the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, April was doing her thing, and uh, so after, we were all just hanging out, you know, musicians hanging around, hanging out around the place, and um, I, I go up to April and I say, hey, you sound really great, I really enjoyed what we did, I enjoyed playing with you, you sound really great, and she was like, thank you. And that was it. <laughs> And, and I'm just standing there, you know, this is awkward silence. And then, <laughs> so you go, oh, and I say again, after a few minutes of awkward silence, nothing being said, you know, I'm like, oh, hey, you sound, well, once again, you sound really great. I really enjoyed playing with you. And, uh, you know, you sound really great. Thank you. Mm, that's that's two. That's two. That's two. So that's how that's how our first meeting uh, came about. And uh You know, I think we ran into each other one more time in 2013. And then we just started, uh, we connected, we we exchanged numbers. Uh, I believe we exchanged numbers probably a second time when we met. I think so. We exchanged business cards. Let's let's keep it. We exchanged business cards. (laughs) Oh. She had a much, yeah, she had a business (laughs) card that was a little flashy. And I had my homemade business card with my name on it. Yeah. So. So anyway, we kind of, uh, I happened to call her, or I actually text her. I text her. A year later. Right before the, it was in the same year. It was in, at the end of 2013 because it was December. Well, it was basically a year later. Yes, because we did meet early in 2013. It was like in February is when we started. Oh, meeting. yeah, that's that's pretty early. It's like right. 10, that's like 10 months. That's yeah. a year. <laughs> that's a year, right? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, at the end of the year, I was like, oh, you know, I... Let me text her and see how she's doing. And she texts me back. And, you know, we got to uh, talking at the beginning of 2014. That's in, And that's how it all started. We started dating. We went on our first date in, in January of 2014. And then from there, we just, you know, kept seeing each other. And then, you know, we officially started dating February the 22nd. Oh. January 2014. So that's when it 
kind of officially happened as a couple. And then from there, we kind of formed our group, Sounds of A&R. Now, April usually says she came up with she came up with the idea of sounds of A and R. Yes, I did. So she says, but I say she came up with, and then she, I think she said, I think she came up with sounds of R and A. No. First, and I told R her, I said, a. yes, I said, because you say, well, you can have your, you can have your initial start. It's our initial sounds of right. Randall and April, or sounds of April and Randall. She's like, you can have your, you can have the group start with your initials. I said, no. Let's do sounds of A and R because that's a play on words. People will recognize the A and R as yeah. artists, you know, as artists repertoire. So musicians right. and, and people in the industry will know that. But also it spells out soar, S O A R. Right. And then put it, it seems natural, you know, for other reasons, you know, to put her name first. first. You know, yeah. So, so um, that's. Yeah. That's close enough that's to the truth. We'll close. take that answer. Yes. Yeah, I like that. I think that that's a very unique name. Uh, when I post it on my Instagram story, when I post, that's what I do. Uh, I like to, I listen to music a lot. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of listening. I listen to a lot of things and I share it to my friend back in Texas. Um, so they can, you know, you know, get influenced by different things. You know, it's other people out there is doing a lot of great things in the music industry, especially mm -hmm. with jazz. So uh sounds of like AR when I first heard when I first heard that name, me personally, I was like, okay, AR, I was like you said, the uh, R is a repertoire. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. it didn't dawn on me until I was like, hold on, I did my I kept on reading, did my research, got April, and then we have Randall. Um yeah. mm -hmm. that's crazy. So you guys are partners in music and life. So mm -hmm. I know you guys probably get this question a lot, and I'm 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 sure that. The people who follow new wave jazz and who are watching this also want to know like what are how you know is it hard working together or is it is it one of those things where it's kind of like a match made in heaven where it's like you know what is the process too like let's say randall you have a you have a composition that hey i, I think we should do it this way in april you know how do you guys work together I think, you know, our foundation, even in our relationship, started with music. And so it just naturally comes together as, you know, for us to perform and even write together. Um, what usually happens in the writing process is I will say I'm the spark and Randall is the flame. So I have a lot of different ideas that come out of, I'm a very emotional person. And so like I get ideas just out of like life. So okay. one of the songs that I wrote, they keep saying no, was because I got an email from a company that we were trying to work with and they said no. And I was like, ah, oh, they keep saying no. And then I was like, oh, that's a song. And then I started, <laughs> you know, humming a melody and Randall was like, oh, that sounds pretty good. And so we just go to the piano and we just get it down that same day because sometimes, you know, when you have an idea and you let it sit too long, it kind of dwindles away. Yeah. And so a lot of what happens is I have this spark, I have this idea, and then Randall, he's such a, I will say he's very, very versed and very knowledgeable with harmonies. And so when I have a melody, he's able to find these different colors and different ways to bring out the melody that I've come up with. And so that's what I feel like works really well for us is yeah. his, you know, expertise in harmony and mine in, uh, in melody. Yeah, and, I, and it flows very good. I, I don't mean to cut you off, Randall. Oh, go ahead. No. Uh, I, I actually want to add on to, to what April said because you can hear that, especially in, the, in this album, uh, Questions Left Unanswered. That's what we're here for today, guys, New Wave Jazz. Make sure you guys uh, stream and listen to that uh, by Sounds of, sounds of A&R, Questions Left Unanswered. Um, you can hear that through literally every song, uh, and we we talked earlier about you know the songs that we we're gonna check out, but you can hear that very well. And I did some more research on you, Randall. Uh, you studied under Winton Marsalis, huh? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Winton Marsalis. Uh, yeah. I owe a lot to that gentleman. He's been he's always been instrumental in so many young musicians' lives and careers for you know for the last you know forty years, you yeah. know, and. Um, 
I'm just one of many of uh, <laughs> his uh, disciples, pupils. I was <laughs> his protege at some point and uh, when I was a member of the Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra. So oh. I learned a lot and I just, you know, Mr. Winton Marcellus and Mr. Marcus Roberts, those gentlemen gave me my first shot. You know, they, you know, they saw something in me uh, at a very young, young age. I was just, you know, I didn't even know, you know, barely could play a blues, could barely, could, barely could play my horn, my trumpet. I'm still trying to figure all these things out. Yeah. And they, you know, they said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to give you a shot. And that's one thing that went and he told me when he first brought me up to Lincoln Center. He said, I brought you up here to learn. So don't get mad when I don't give you any solos because you're not up here to blow solos. You're out here to you up here to learn. You understand? Yeah, yeah that yeah, sounds okay. like that sounds like something you would say. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You stood me out there on the balcony. We said at Lincoln, well, Lincoln Center, you we all used to be at 65th, you know, uh 65th and Broadway. Mm-hmm. And then and then and, you know, after the shows, we would go across the street and um and hang out at the at the hotel that, uh over there. But uh he yeah, I remember on the balcony he told me that. And so those guys gave me my first shot, but yes, uh, I owe a lot to them. And, uh, you know, so I keep up with him from time to time and see how he's doing and stuff like that. But yes, Mr. Winter Marcel is very <laughs> instrumental in my formative years of training. That's where I got my, my best schooling, you know, learning from those guys. Uh, yeah. And you can really hear it in your music. Like you can hear it. It's like there's like, uh, and not taken away from you, like, but you can hear just the professionalism and the uh just the you know like you said the the, the um the cadence of how how everything flows i'm like man it's like a send and receive you know like oh, april uh woo, and you can right. follow her right there and, and, right, and it's right, amazing right. and it, it's a, a, a beautiful like togetherness oh, and i love it i you. love it i love thank it you so much um let's talk about this album questions left unanswered um what how do y'all come up with that with that title because first off it's like question left unanswered hmm, i wonder where you're where you're going but tell us about tell us about that so it started by um one of the songs on our album is entitled questions left unanswered and that's that song just spoke to me like randall he had initially he wrote all the music for it and then he let me listen to it and it just made me think about just life Mm -hmm. and how we're all just here trying to find the answers i mean that's just basically what it is there's always going to be questions there's always going to be these unknowns and that's what makes life beautiful and it's also what makes life sad and everything in between and so when we came up with the song together i was like i believe that this should be the title of the album too because it really just speaks to life and how we just are here trying to figure it out. Well, let's take a listen to that. Uh, let's 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 give our listeners a chance to have a taste of sounds of ANR. Here is questions left unanswered by Sounds of ANR right here on New Wave Jazz. <laughs> Running fast to nowhere. We're sprinting past our lives just to go where we replace love with things. But it's the unseen that should manifest our dreams, our hopes that life has meaning inside this human being. But why do we? Questions left unanswered, but I've learned the best questions are left unanswered. Nowhere 
replace love with things <laughs> But it's the unseen that should manifest Our dreams, our hopes that life, your life, my life Has meaning inside this human being But why must we feel pain? Why does it rain? Why does the sun shine? Can somebody tell me why? Questions, questions left unanswered. Questions left unanswered, but I've learned the best questions are left unanswered. That was questions left unanswered by none other than the dynamic duo sounds of a and r um april you pointed something out earlier that um uh, you are you're a songwriter so you you like to experience life and what you get from life you get uh you you get your music you get you get your your influence from yes so tell us about Tell us about your influences. Uh, what, who influenced you as far as um, vocalists, uh, musicians, um, even little, you know, treats of life, you know, to let us inside if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. On this album, I would say I have three main influences um, that I really dissected what they uh, do best. So I'll start with uh, Nina Simone. Um, oh. She has a way of describing her life stories and the reflection of her time with her lyrics in such a vivid and detailed manner. And I really was gravitated towards that. Mm -hmm. And I specifically wrote um, a song called The Skin I'm In to kind of replicate but in my own story, 
um, the way that I feel being black in America and in this world. You know, sometimes you feel like you have to hold in and pent up a lot of the things that you feel on a day to day basis. And with this song in particular, I just let it all out. And I tried to do it in a way that was very artistic and it was very emotional. And the musicians that we had on this album really embodied the feeling that I wanted to convey. So at the beginning, and Randall helped me arrange this piece because once again, I had all these ideas and Randall was like, okay, this is what you're really wanting. This is how, you know, we can get the harp to do this. And spark then- Spark and flame, spark and flame. It, exactly, that's spark <laughs> and flame. <laughs> there it is. And so he was, he helped me to orchestrate how I wanted the instrumentation to, to feel with the melody on top. And so Nina Simone really was an inspiration behind that song. Um, another vocalist that was, and is always an inspiration to me is Miss Sarah Vaughn. Um, the thing that I love about Sarah Vaughn is the way she can change the timbres of her voice to create a variety of different colors, mm-hmm. like mid phrase. And so sometimes she'll start out really deep with this heavy vibrato and then in the same phrase, very light and almost childlike. Mm-hmm. And I just love, you know, adding that kind of um variation to my singing just in general on this album off this album just all the time just to create something that is interesting for people to listen to because it shows how you can paint a picture with just different timbres of your voice it doesn't even have to be lyrically it could just be the different variations of tones and vibratos and uh, I just there's something about that that is just so beautiful to me and I always love listening to her and kind of trying to figure out how I can put my own spin on those elements that she always incorporated into her music okay I mean um really you guys mesh because and when I when I and I say that because Vocally, when you listen to this album and you listen to a, a few tracks like like we're going to do uh, here during this show, you can definitely hear the similarities between the just the overall cadences between vocal and trumpet. It's kind of like, well, you know, the, they always say, you, you know, this is your mouth is an instrument, too. You know, like the way you sing, the way it comes out and, 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 it, and it flows so I don't know. It's like a melting pot with you guys. You guys are really soaring, you know, <laughs> with your music. You really are uh, because you, you it's kind of like a big blend of everything together. And it's just that call and receive, man. It it sounds so good. You you mentioned, April, something about feeling like a kid. Uh, let's take a look at one of your songs you have on this album called Moments When I Was a Kid. Hold it down right here. This is New Wave Jazz. Here's moments when when I was a kid by Sounds of A&R. What a give to relive moments when I was a kid. When the cares of the day was who could and couldn't play. Merry go round and round, hide and seek can't be found. But we'd all gather round when we heard that ice cream truck sound. To relive moments when I was a kid Straight to grandma and grandpa's After school was the rule Oh, the love that they gave us Is the love that I'm made of I can still hear the sound Of their laughter all around Ha 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 
when I was <laughs> a What a give to relive moments when I was a kid When the cares of the day was who could and couldn't play Merry go round and round, hide and seek can't be found But we'd all gather round when we heard that ice cream truck That was Moments When I Was a Kid by none other than the great dynamic duo Sounds of A&R. Uh, we are listening to and experiencing this album together. Um, Randall, questions left unanswered uh, feature some original work, original compositions, and um, some classic songs that we all know and enjoy that's been sung by various people. Um, how did you guys, you know, meld that together to round this album out? How did you know, well, you know, what songs, how did y'all know to pick, yo, this is the one that would fit for what we're trying to, you know, accomplish with this album? Because there's so many classic songs I feel could could fit in this that I know you guys could do. Mm -hmm. So how did y'all come up with the ones that you guys chose? Uh, well, the ones that we've chosen are the ones that we've been performing live. Uh, mm -hmm. that's one one of the reasons i would say uh for example the killing me softly the reprise as well as the uh original track um yeah. we performed that live and the reason why we wanted to include the reprise is because we got such a positive response from the audience you know and yeah. that seems to be our a nice big closer for the for the shows for our live shows and it gives us the opportunity to let our drummer kind of get off on it. So that's why you hear the drums kind of getting off on yeah. at the beginning of the reprise of Killing Me Softly. Um, April had this really nice arrangement of Social Call, which yeah. is, of course, a Gigi Grice classic. And so we just kind of, you know, we basically took that and um, we took the original Gigi Grice Art Farmer recording from the 50s and we just added our own little, we'd like to call it sorify, you know, or, you yeah. know, kind of, kind of give our own little sore flair, sounds of A&R flair to it. But April had this nice little interlude that she wanted to insert in between uh, the A section. So that's why we have this little nice little interlude that goes, that, uh, that happens um, in between the A section. So we were performing that. Um, and uh, with Jolene, I would just say, man, we were just feeling Dolly Parton. It was something... I don't, it was something we was like, oh man, you know what? We need to do that. It's such a, it's the original recording is just a classic and it's just yeah. such a haunting, you know, uh, groove and melody. It's very deep, very in the pocket, you know? So right. we're like, you know what? This would be actually kind of nice. We need to record that, you know? So we're just trying to pay some homage to some of our great singer, songwriter, artists that have, kind of paved the way for us and 
you know, uh, that would be, I would say that's one of the reasons why we chose to do that. We're kind of following a formula that we've done, even mm-hmm. on our first uh, straight ahead record, uh, self-entitled Sounds of A&R, yeah. Yeah. where we took some songs. We did Paul McCartney, Blackbird. We did Stevie Wonder, All I Do on that one. We did yeah, Beyonce's I like that one. version of Party. So, you yeah. know, we kind of took that same form. And those were songs that we were performing live at that time. Mm-hmm. When we put out that record, so we was like, "Oh, okay, well, let's you know do some stuff that we were doing during this time." Okay, uh, and I think that that it, it, like I said, this album is just very great from start to finish. A lot of in, especially the opening track, um, thus the beginning. Uh, it it, yeah. it um it kind of answers questions left unanswered. Kind of answered that question I asked before, like mm-hmm. you know what where you get that from and you get your information right there and it's a beautiful poem a beautiful spoken word i would say and uh it explains you know what's happening and then once you listen to this album all the way through you're like okay some things don't some things don't need don't need the answer some things are just you know some things are right here and that's all we need we just need to experience it you know exactly. um there you go I think that's uh, amazing. Uh, you you mentioned Jolene uh, earlier. We have that. Uh, we want we we really want uh, our listeners to check out Jolene. You your you guys's version of Jolene. So <laughs> hold tight. Here's Jolene by Sounds of A and R. This is New Wave Jazz. Jolene. 
Randall, you mentioned earlier that um, a lot of your previous work, uh, in contrast, how does this album uh, differ? Or, you know, how does it differ as far as the album making process, as far as, you know, who's involved maybe? I don't know, let us, let us in behind the scenes on, on that. Well, the players are um, quite the same with the exception of the piano player. Uh, so the players that you hear on the record from the drums is Nathan Webb. That's April's oldest brother. Oh, wow. And uh, he's a very accomplished musician himself. Uh, he's played with Kenny Garrett, Mulgrew Miller, and he's a wonderful educator uh, here in, in New Jersey. And uh, so he's quite the percussionist. And so we used him on the first album as well as on this album as well. Uh, the bassist is also April's older, bro uh, uh, also April's brother. His name is Jacob Webb. So mm -hmm. He's quite the uh, uh, musician and producer himself. Um, shout out to Jacob Webb. He has his own record label and he produces some wonderful young uh, up and coming artists. Uh, Next Paradigm is the name of his record label. And okay. um, he's a very accomplished music musician. And that those two gentlemen uh, were with us on the first two on the first record. Okay. The guitarist uh, was also with us on the first record as well. His name is Mr. Charlie Sigler. And um, I think you um, might have met Charlie. Yeah, I went to school with him at William right. Patterson. Right. Yeah, that's how I met him. Right. So mm -hmm. Charlie is uh, he's he's a very accomplished guitarist. He's spent quite a bit. I met him through playing with Renard Harper. I, when I joined Renard Harper, Renard Harper's group, um, that's when I met Charlie, and I got to know him. He's a very wonderful individual and a great player. And uh, so those, that's basically, and I, kept, I always tell April, I said, that's your rhythm section right there. That's, that's, <laughs> that mm -hmm. is your rhythm section that's going to take you wherever you want to go. And, um, and it's yeah. in the family. I think that's very, very, <laughs> yeah. very, very, that's a go. blessing. That's a blessing right, right there. Right. Absolutely. Man, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So I told her, I said, yeah, that's, that's your rhythm section there for whatever you want to do, whatever style, whether it's, you know, you know, swing era, bebop, you know, cool, modern, modal, avant-garde, you yeah. know, anything you want to do, that's your rhythm section, because they can take you in those directions. Uh, the piano player that we use for this record is, uh, his name is Mr. James Austin, very yeah. fine piano player, and uh, actually, I met him through uh, my association with um, Nathan and, uh, and Jacob, and, um, and so he added such a very nice touch of uh, of the sound that we were looking for and uh we're very thankful for his contribution uh to it and he's also an accomplished uh artist himself you know and um and then we added the the harpist that you hear her name is mrs reza printup she's the wife of marcus printup who is mm -hmm. also a trumpeter for uh lincoln center jazz orchestra he's been there for about 25 years at least and wow. uh, he was one of my teachers uh one of my uh, trumpet teachers when i was coming up and um so that's what the and so the difference was uh we just changed the uh, the piano play or we had a different piano player uh, from the first record the first record we were using lafayette harris who was also a great pianist i played with him uh in new york uh quite often but i think the process was pretty much the same we gave the musicians okay. the music once we had everything together we put them in the studio. We had two sessions. We actually had the record done <laughs> by the end of 2019. Wow. And we were set to release it uh, in the spring of 2020. You know, and we were, <laughs> it was just funny. We were just all talking about, you know, in the beginning of 2020, we had such high hopes for the year. Yes. You know, we were like, oh, man, we're going <laughs> to, boy, this is going to be good. We were talking in January, right? You know, this is like, and then little things started to happen one by one. You know, we started, mm -hmm. you know, we, Got our hearts broken uh, by the, you know, the tragic loss of Kobe Bryant at the end of January. And then, yeah. you know, it just started spiraling down from there. It was like, oh, wow. You know, so we yeah. had the record done, but it was like, oh, gosh, you know, we just had to kind of take hold of what was going on at that time. And so um, we basically, which was a good thing. It did allow us to make some adjustments mm -hmm. um, and um, 
Speaking of adjustments, one of the adjustments that we made, or one of the inclusions to the original record, was that spoken word that Afro wrote uh, hey. that starts out the record. Yeah. You know, and I feel like that was really good because it's like she had this idea, and like you know what, people, this will give people a chance to figure out or to learn who we are. We don't really say that in the first record. Yeah. You know, Sounds of A and R, the first record, we just start. You know. We start off with the tune that we played together and was the first time we met in Moore's Lounge. So we wow. start off the record playing September in the Rain on our first record. But this one was a great idea. April's like, you know what? Let's give, you know, let's kind of. Uh, and now here's something for your <laughs> listeners. But anyway, uh, okay, I, it's like um, oh, Lord. we started off playing, <laughs> you know, the the poem, you know, for the record, which mm -hmm. was, you know, it was great. I think uh, I think that poem fit perfectly, kind of like like what I said earlier. You know, it, it explains you know what questions left unanswered. Well, it gives an, another idea, another theme. You know, to what's going on. Um, you mentioned mm -hmm. uh, 2020, and I think we all we all know what 2020 means and what 2020 <laughs> exactly. is. Mm -hmm. um, what was that? What was that like for you guys? I know you said it gave you an opportunity to make adjustments, but I think everybody had high hopes, you know, coming in 2020, like, hey, we're going to do this thing. You know, it's a mm -hmm. new move. It, it just sounds new. 2020 sounds new right, and good, right. but mm -hmm. things just total opposite. So tell us about that process as well. You know, 2020 it really allowed us to be creative in a way that we didn't know we'd have to be right you know you're right. trying to figure out how to reach people you're trying to figure out how to stay in contact with people and with being a musician you're trying to figure out how do we keep this going how do we keep the energy going how do we keep putting out music and keep doing things right. and so when the pandemic when it first hit we kind of just was laying back a little bit because we all thought it was going to be a two week thing and that yeah. we're going to get back, <laughs> you know, Everybody Everybody. Like 14 days. Every, every okay. It was like, okay, we be back at it 14 <laughs> days. That's fine. But then when we realized, okay, this ain't going to be 14 days, uh, <laughs> uh -oh. how are we going to adjust? How are we going to adjust? And we actually started doing, um, these videos called creating during quarantine we would post two videos a month um, just creating content on Facebook and it really started to take off um, one of our videos got over a hundred thousand views wow. and you know I say this because I think you know people at this time were just looking and craving for things to watch and things to do yeah. and so you know, we just took a hold of that and just really focusing in on what we had. And that was social media and just trying to put out different content that would be, you know, uplifting for people during this time. And it was uplifting for us to be doing these things as well, because, you know, we weren't going anywhere and we didn't know when we we're going to start going anywhere. So we we're like, you know, let's just create a vibe at home. Let's just, you know, bring people into our homes, bring people into uh, a different type of feel. And I think we just really started honing down on our social media um, like a lot of people have have done. But I think it's made such a big difference because now we're starting to have like a family, a community of people online. And we're just very grateful for that, especially during this time. Yeah, and uh, yeah, although 2020 or, or COVID, however you want to label it, it kind of made us isolate, isolated in, in a sense. But I think that, like you said, social media, we all were craving something. We were like, hey, okay, this is not working. Let's, let's, let me check my phone. What's happening over here? And feeding that, we're like you know especially even with radio uh, i think radio has took a big turn because of that because we usually do you know phone interviews or we'll do a, a if y'all in town or in charleston or somewhere close you know we'll invite you guys out but that's that's not happening anymore you know we gotta right. adapt we have to do zoom meetings we have to exactly. <laughs> yes we have to adapt so um Talk about that. Um, uh, uh, talk about uh, adapting for a moment. 
when um, you're trying to create, uh, let's say, you know, it, all this isolation, you know, it kind of makes you, I feel like, I know it gave me a time where I was like, man, I'm, I'm in writer's block. I can't, I can't even come up with anything. So tell us, how do you guys continue to keep on going to continue to feed, you know, social media? I think just, and this is something that I've learned just throughout life is like, even the little things you can find inspiration from, they don't have to be these big occurrences that happen in your life. I, I really just am such an intuitive person. And when my emotions are a little different, like I really tune into it. And I just find inspirations just by every day and just thoughts and feelings that come to my mind. Like I have a journal and I write all those things down mm -hmm. and then somehow they come together in some way. Like I may not know like how it's going to come together, but these different thoughts that come into my head somehow all come together eventually mm -hmm. to create something. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's very strange, but I, I picked up on that really quickly, especially having so much time to yourself and, yeah. and, and to your thoughts. You know, you can go a little crazy. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. you got to write that stuff down. You got to get it out. And I yeah. think it's so true with most of us. It's like, man, I didn't realize, you know, all these thoughts that I have and all these things that I feel like, what does that mean? Like, what is that? What is that? Yeah. And, you know, just writing it all down and then coming back to it later and be like, oh, man, OK, that was that. Or this was this. And be like, I don't sometimes I still don't know what it means, but sometimes it could just be a beautiful thing that you had in your mind and you just wrote it down. Right. And it comes out and, it, and, and you never know, like just from like that isolation and just being in your own head, you kind of find out more about yourself, too. Yes, um, you find a lot of, about just who you are as an individual. You're like, huh, I never even looked at. Oh, man, I, I do do this a lot. I do do X, Y, Z or yes. I don't I don't do X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. you know? I think it was a good, good opportunity for us and a good eye opener for all of us during that time. I mean, I think it's still kind of going on. I, I feel like normal won't be normal ever again. Me personally, yeah. right. uh, just from you know so yeah and, and speaking of that you know you guys are in new york city so how is it you know i know that it's way different there than it is you know down here in the low country so how is it being an artist i know you guys miss gigging i know you guys miss mm -hmm. being around around that so tell us about that tell us about that experience well the interesting thing is that uh, like you said in in a small period of time all of the gigs and everything that you would expect uh, when you come to New York City uh, to have as an artist, uh, they were all just gone. And we were all the same. <laughs> I always like to, I say this, you know, I say, well, wow, you know what? We're all on the same level now, you know, because all of your artists are now just, we've all have to, you know, rely on the technology that we have. Like if you have a computer and you have your, you know, you have uh, uh, a digital audio workstation set up and then mm -hmm. if you have a nice phone and you can connect and get yourself get your sound out there but you know that's basically what's going on you know lincoln center is not performing their you know weekly performances broadway is closed down you know yeah. and, I mean, that's you a know, big so, hit yes <laughs> you know so hit. that's a lot you know so there's now i mean as we're starting to see things you know there are a few uh there have been a few wedding gigs that mm -hmm. I, I hear that musicians uh have been able to uh participate in mm -hmm. and uh a few outdoor uh restaurants that have allowed some musicians to have you guys performances. we haven't really well uh, we did a we few did... things um we did something back in september that's um, right and it was the way they had it set up it was like an outside um concert and it was it actually was at a medical facility mount yeah in mount vernon new york yes. and they did such a beautiful job because we were out in a big big open space big field um and they had uh circles around the whole field where 
once once you got in your circle, that's where you were supposed to stay, you know, <laughs> you know, they were very, and, and everyone yeah. was they they did what they were supposed to do. We even, we even had masks and we were outside and there was contact tracing. All of that stuff was done and nobody got sick. Nobody, you know, everything was done very properly. Um, but I've seen situations where, you know, it things aren't done, yes. you know, and they're not up to par. Um, And those are the decisions that you have to make even now. Like when someone calls me for a gig, you know, I'm not just asking about what's the time, what's the bread. I'm, I'm saying now, what are the, what are the circumstances? How big is the space? Like what, you know, because you don't want to, as much as you want to perform, you you just don't want to get sick. You don't want to play around with this. And, you know, it's so difficult, but I will say the beauty of it is we've had a lot of virtual gigs yes, and we've oh, been able to yeah. you know be in contact with people from all over the world mm-hmm. um and that has been the one thing that i have enjoyed is being in you know mm-hmm. virtual spaces with people that i wouldn't have normally mm-hmm. and i really do enjoy i feel like we've had more of a broader reach staying at home mm-hmm. <laughs> That's and that really makes you kind of think like, hmm, what if I started that five years ago? Maybe <laughs> or know. not even right. or not even five years ago. But you know, just what if I added that a little? Let's take you know, let's do three months. We at the house. Right. We you know, it's a very mm-hmm. interesting time. And I think um, just from this album, you know, you said you guys finished it before twenty twenty. I finished it before twenty nineteen. But I think that with music, it it's going to last no matter what, you know, especially if it's, mm-hmm. if it's substance, you know, and it's, it sounds good. It sounds of A&R, you know, like if it's, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's just something about music that I, I feel like that kind of carries us, you know, that carries us through. And I, and I thank you guys for continuing. Cause I feel like I know a lot of artists who just, I'm a program director. So I, I talk to these music riffs. Some of these artists get discouraged especially i know especially during 2020 uh there was a couple of albums i was looking forward to but they didn't want to put it out because they're like this is an album i feel like we need to be outside on we need to do but from what you guys are saying you guys are adapting and not afraid to you know make things work let's check out another track from uh, this amazing album questions left unanswered oh what y'all think that what y'all think we should uh, hit them with What's and we do, yeah so we done questions left that we done moments when i was a kid we've done jolene so oh if you want to do that one yeah that's a classic gg yeah. grace classic social call okay well you guys introduced this song for for our listeners all right well, basically, this is April's wonderful arrangement of Social Call, and um, I I love the colors that the ensemble was able to to pull out of this arrangement. But this was something that April kind of she just thought about this little interlude that I was telling you about, mm-hmm. and uh, I was like, you know what? Let's let's include that. And so that kind of just we don't really we like to take the original uh, pieces of or we like to take the the covers of those classic tunes that are written by our famous artists and we don't want to we want to try to at least try to give our own take on it because obviously we can't you know we don't want to compare ourselves to the original right. uh version of or the original uh definitive version of Gigi Grice's social call but we felt that this was nice and this pays a nice tribute to Gigi Grice so this is April's arrangement of Gigi Grice's social call Say bubble boy Say you let the bubble boy Say you lay you lay you lay Happened to pass your doorway Gave you a buzz, that's all Lately I thought lots about you So I thought I'd pay a social Have a ball. Not that I'm lonesome without you. I just thought I'd pay a social call. I lie and say things are just a swell. But to tell the truth, I haven't been too well. And if you should try to kiss 
me Promise that you won't stop Maybe we'll get back together Starting from this incidental Elemental, simple, social Social Call, April May Webb and Randall Haywood. We're uh, we're coming to a close, man. This has been an amazing new wave jazz show, man. Uh, this is something we've never done we've, before. This is we're all adapting. We're all adapting. So we want to say thank you guys for um, spending time with us. Um, and Sounds of A&R, do you have anything that you want to leave our listeners with? Yeah. Um... So our album, Questions Left Unanswered, we really just wanted to put out music that was thought-provoking, that made you feel every kind of emotion that you have. You know, this album really just came from the innermost parts of our being, and it's really a collaboration of Randall and myself, of Sounds of A&R, and that we hope that you feel something when you listen to this record. We hope that it sparks some kind of emotion and that you enjoy rocking out with us. Yeah, so, and I 
agree with Miss April Webb, and uh, I think that um, I think that this is uh, our best work so far, and that means that mm. this is a step up from what we've done uh, from our previous work. We're very proud of our works that we've done in the past, but and I'm very proud of this one, and I believe that this was this is a jewel uh, that will become a collector's item. And wow. uh, we want you guys to just be a part of that with us. And and uh, here again, we'd like to definitely, definitely we I would be remiss to not give a shout out to those who have been working on our behalf. A lot of times people think, oh, OK, you guys are doing this and you guys doing that. But, you know, there's people that have been working on our behalf uh, uh, and rocking with us, even rocking with us when we were putting out the first record before mm -hmm. some people knew about us. So we want to give a shout out to our uh, our manager, Miss Sheila Baptista. Uh, she's been rocking with us up here. Uh, she's the person that got us the gig in Mount Vernon, and mm -hmm. she's kind of gotten us all kind of you know wonderful opportunities. Uh, we want to thank our radio promotion, Mr. Neil Sapper, and the Neil. crew at New World <laughs> Jazz. I know you know Neil. You know he's a great guy. He's he was rocking with us on the first record as well. Yeah. He's a, he's an awesome awesome. Uh, his his uh his company New World and Jazz, uh, they've been rocking with us and they and just a wonderful guy. So we want to give a shout out to Mr. Neil Sapper. We want to give a shout out to Mrs. Lydia Liebman. Uh, she's the publicist who's been working on our behalf, and um, you know she's been you know helping us uh push the record forward and just kind of helping us spread the word. And so uh, it you know, takes a village. It, it does. takes a village. It really yeah, does. Yeah. Does. So we want to definitely give a shout out to all those people there and just thank you, Mr. Brothers, for having us on here. This is absolutely great. You know, we are now big fans of WSSB. And <laughs> thank you. Down to South Carolina. We are going to be we're going to be coming and hopefully yeah. we'll be able to do something for you. You know, whenever we you know, whenever we can get it, you know, get it together. We'd love to. Yeah, and we and we'd appreciate that and we we thank you again you know we can go back and forth we thank you <laughs> oh, yeah. really we, yes, we, yes. we we really could because you know uh like you said it does take a village um i'm not gonna we're, we're not gonna waste any more time uh this has been new wave jazz with the sounds of a and r uh questions left unanswered be sure to stream that uh i've been streaming it uh i'm sure you can stream it wherever you get your music uh um just continue to show support and to continue to show love and let's continue to spread the forward progression of jazz thank you this has been new wave jazz right here on wssb 90.3 south carolina's jazz station <laughs>